Hey guys, in today's video we're going to go through and do the header and you can already see that I've started out with some code that you might want to copy down. They are nothing new, they are a pretty standard code that you might see in any kind of website. And you see that all the classes here, while they're not really from me, they're from our Twitter Bootstrap framework. So you could just copy this code into your own header file and it should work. I want to bring your attention to our style sheets folder. You can see that I've created a project meal.css.scss, and that probably doesn't exist for you yet. But if it doesn't, then I want you to create it right now. And if you navigate over to here, what I did is I copied this code from several of my other other projects. It's basically a base framework style sheet that I use for all my projects and it's been pretty standard throughout so you could really just copy this code and plug it into your own and we could just leave it at that because it's just going to be a base code that's probably going to be in many of your projects so you could just copy and paste that file over to your style sheets folder. After this, I want to talk about our application.css folder, and you might be wondering what this folder actually does. Well, it has two directives, require tree dot and to require self. What require tree dot does is it pretty much combines all the style sheets that you have inside the style sheets folder, and it combines it into one file. And the require self just pretty much tells your system to say, okay, we combine the folder. Now I want to use that one file that we combined everything in and use it for our CSS. So that's pretty much our application.css and our project meal.css.scss. So now that we have all the all the little chores done for our CSS, let's head back to the header.html.erb. Again, you can see that it's pretty standard. Uh, this is to make a, a, a little black little navigation bar at the top of our web app. And you can see here that this little part where I left blank is where we're going to do all our work. So this is pretty much our nav bar. Uh, you can see that from the from the unordered list class, nav bar, nav, nav bar, nav bar right. And you can really see that the nav, nav class is really the entire nav bar. And the right part, nav bar right, is where we're going to manipulate or do some things to have uh, a sign in or sign out option or a profile option on the right of the nav bar. So without further ado, let's just code this up. And we're going to start with the li element. And inside this element, we're going to have a link to sh our shopping cart. And this link to function is really part of Rails. So this arrowhead percentage sign equal and our percentage sign equal really is our opening statement to uh, to uh, a link to function by Rails which creates the a tag for HTML. So that creates our shopping cart, our shopping cart link. Continue on if we continue to um, to work on this on this drop down we want to, in, to make an if else statement. So if the user is signed in, then we're going to do something else, we're going to do something else. And this is pretty much the basic concept of if else statement that you see in every kind of other programming languages. So it's really nothing new if you know other programming languages. If, it, if it's completely new to you, then it's pretty simple. If the user is signed in, then we're going to do something. If the user is not signed in, which is represented by the else, we're going to do something else. So that's pretty much the if else statement. And inside the if statement, we're going to make a little drop down class. And this class is really just to give us a little toggle for drop downs. And if the user is signed in, they're going to see uh, an account link. And this account link, when they click it, it will give them some more options. And these options are represented in our unordered list. And our unordered list is going to have a class of a drop down menu. And inside that drop down menu, we're going to have some li elements. Our first li element would be another link to, to the profile. Because if, it's, if a user is signed in, then we want to give them an uh, option to click on their profile and see what they have on, under their profile. And then we're going to make an, an, another li class with the class divider. It's going to be empty because it's just going to represent a separate line to separate the profile link to everything else. And lastly, we're just going to copy and paste our profile and make a little signed out link to, to give a, the user an option to sign up. We're going to indent that and we're going to go into our else statement and give the user an option to, to sign in if they're not signed in. So this link to really just allows the user 
to sign in or brings them to a sign in page where they can sign in if they're not already signed in. So that's not signed in but signed in. So really watch out for misspellings because it can make your project defective. But other than that, let's head on over to our to our our browser and if we refresh it then then you can see that that's that's a black bar that shows up and it was already there but um, that was a little code that I was working just to make sure it works but if we go to local again you can see that the project meal does come up if we change the name project meals then extra, extra s should be added to the end so that's your little lesson on headers and and style sheets. I hope you learned something. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any projects or anything that you'd like to ask, you can leave it in the comments or email us at uh, coursehack at gmail.com. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.